<laughs> very enthusiastic. Thank you. And this is um, Lakshmi Nishringa. Das. He's a kirtanier. And um, I don't know if they've, we've put him in the schedule. Have, is he in the schedule? If not, huh? Okay. Um, throughout the pandemic, he's come on every day uh, doing kirtan. Um, I subscribed to his uh, channel or his podcast, so it often come up on my screen when I'm working on my computer in India or whatever, and um, I just turn on the, the bhajan and continue my work. So his uh, kirtans have flowed through my heart throughout the pandemic. Every day, right, Lux? Every day, irregardless, he's there and, you know, there's no one else in the room. <laughs> he's just singing his heart out to Goranga Mahaprabhu and Radha and Krishna and Sridhar Prabhupada. So he was the main staple in my uh, pandemic times, a very wonderful kirtan. I don't know if you knew I was watching, but I was a subscriber. Sometimes I'd comment, but thank you for maintaining us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jaya Gunjadi Hadi Jaya Jana Bala Ba Jayo Kopi Jana Bala Ba Jaiho Kiri Vada Dari Jai Kiri Vada
Gonna try Die old Under the Die Kunda We have
Shri Radha Madhava Ke Shri Shri Krishna Balaram Ke Shri Braju Bhumi Shri Vrindavan Dhamma Ke Shri Rabhava Padu Vidhila Radham Ke Is there a cover for this one? Can you see me with this big screen in front? <laughs> I had to find a verse because I couldn't, I didn't have the book. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Govakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Govakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Go Bhakti Vrindam So on this very auspicious day um, where devotees in our International Society for Krishna Consciousness and many other Gaudiya Vaishnava organizations, Gaudiya Math, etc., it's a big, big day, celebrating uh, the appearance of the golden avatar, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in this world. So for this um, lecture, I've I'm going to speak from one of my most, most, most um, favorite verses in our scriptures from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Prabhupada went to great effort to um, translate this Bengali scripture by Kaviraj uh, Goswami. And as we heard from another speaker, I can't remember, it was uh, Kavi Chandra Maharaj, um, how Prabhupada pushed his disciples <laughs> to um, publish along with uh, beautiful paintings, that book for the world. Actually, Chaitanya Charitamrita was the favorite Shastra of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He loved to speak from that book. And he said one day, people uh, around the world would learn Bengali to be able to read and hear uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita in its original language. It's a little touch lost sometime in, in translations, but the Bengali is very sweet and very much in the mood of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. So he predicted that will happen someday. It'll become very popular, maybe because um, on Sridhar Prabhupada's order, there will be many sets of Srimad Bhagavatam in people's homes. I know my senior illustrious um, godbrother Vaishashika Prabhu He's instrumental in fulfilling this um, uh, desire of Sridhar Prabhupada, actually, to have sets of Bhagavatams and sets of Chaitanya Tartamita in people's homes. Uh, they may not 
read them immediately, but they're there for their families or for future generations, as long as they're out there. Someday they'll be read. Just like Prabhupada said, when they make bombs in modern society, someday they'll be used. So he compared many times this in Sankirtan. These are like time bombs. They'll go off one day, and people will appreciate uh, the deep message that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought to this world, which will be a theme of our um, talk today. I've chosen um, Adi Lila, text two. I have not learned Bengali, neither am I very proficient, so I'll skip the Bengali, and I'll read the translation. Oh, my merciful Lord Chaitanya, may the, may the nectarian Ganges waters of your transcendental activities flow on the surface of my desert-like tongue, beautifying these waters of the lotus flowers of singing, dancing, and the loud chanting of Krishna's holy names, which are the pleasure abodes of unalloyed devotees. These devotees are compared to swans, ducks, and bees, and the rivers flowing produces a melodious sound that gladdens their ears. It's a long purport, so I'm just going, Prabhupada gives the essence, or he sums it up in the last paragraph, so I'll read the last uh, paragraph. Lord Chaitanya's movement of Krishna consciousness is full of dancing and singing about the pastimes of Lord Krishna. It is compared herein to the pure waters of the Ganges, which are full of lotus flowers. The enjoyers of these lotus flowers are the pure devotees who, like bees and, who are like bees and swans. They chant like the flowing of the Ganges, the river of the celestial kingdom. The author desires such sweetly flowing ways to cover his tongue. He humbly compares himself to materialistic persons who are always engaged in dry talk from which they derive no satisfaction. If they were to use their dry tongues to chant the holy names of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare Hare. As exemplified by Lord Chaitanya, they would taste sweet nectar and enjoy life, as we are. <laughs> so, there's actually so much that could be said today. Uh, the, the transcendental pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are like innumerable uh, precious gems. So which one do you uh, pick up and comment on? Uh, I heard that I wasn't present this morning because I had some urgent business. Um, but I heard that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave a wonderful Wonderful, wonderful lecture. I was getting uh, text messages. Just it's a wonderful class. Rush down here. <laughs> but as one of the uh, speakers today, I, I thought that um, I, I, I would speak s uh, some of the basics um, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the as the Yuga avatar. To begin with, as we know, in each age, the Lord appears to inaugurate um, the Yuga Dharma, or the process for self-realization in the age. Bhagavatam says, Damantu Sakshat Bhagavat Pranitam. But for the Lord, no one else can uh, inaugurate the process of religion, this Dharma. He's the singular, uh, only person who can uh, introduce the process of religion in any of the four ages, Satya, Treta, Dipura, and also in Kali Yuga. Um, generally, the Lord is described as Tri Yuga Avatar. Tri means three, so he, Tri Yuga Avatar means he, he appears directly in three ages, but he appears indirectly in the age of Kali. 
actually once there were uh, three sages and they were uh, discussing the benefits of each age, the process uh, as given in each age by the Lord. And it kind of turned into an argument because they were, you know, very adamant in their, in their opinion. The first sage, he said, well, it's, it's quite obvious that the age of Satya, Yuga, is the, the, the best age for self-realization because, um, well, in, in Satya Yuga, almost everyone is aspiring uh, for perfection in spiritual life. And the process is meditation over a thousand years. <laughs> you just sit and you meditate. Om. So the second sage, he said, excuse me, sir, actually Treta Yugas, the, the most, the, the best age for self-realization because, you know, the time period's cut down. <laughs> uh, it's not thousands of years, it's a few hundred years. And it's very simple. Householders can go to the yajna, participate with the priest, and throw the grains. Svaha, svaha, svaha. And that is the process. It's more simple than meditating in the mountains. And the third sage, he, he spoke up. And he said, no, no, you're both wrong. Dwapura Yuga is the best because the Lord incarnates himself. And one simply has to go to the temple and see the Archimurti, the, the deity of the Lord, and hear about the Lord's pastimes. That's all, you go to the temple. So, to make a long story short, it kind of turned, you know, push turned to shove. <laughs> and it got to be a very heated argument. <laughs> Satya, no, Treta, no. Dapura, no, Treta. <laughs> and they said, okay, okay, okay. We'll solve it by going to an authority. If, there's, if we can't come to a, a conclusion, we go to a, a, a spiritual authority, someone who's more advanced than us. So for these great sages, actually, in their mind, the greatest authority in scripture is Srila Vyasadeva, because he is the literary incarnation of God. And as you know, Srila Vyasadeva is still living in the uh, Himalayan mountains. He's still there. He stays there out of his causeless mercy. Just his presence purifies the world. So they went to see him, to, to ask him, you know, who is the, uh, what is the best age for self-realization? So when they got there, Srila Vyasadeva was meditating in a tank of water, underneath the water. So they came to his ashram and they were directed to where he was in the tank. And he was under there for a long time in his tapas. So they began calling out to him, these three sages, sir, you're the authority, you're the literary incarnation, you know the Shastras. Please come out and tell us what is the best age to be born in, to become self-realized. Is it Satya? Is it Treta? Is it Dupora? And they were so enthusiastic, suddenly, Vyasadeva came out, and he's from a previous age, so in previous ages, human beings were much bigger. He's standing there like a huge figure before him, and they're waiting for the answer. And what does he say? Satya, Treta, Dupura. Kaler doshadin he rajan asyeka mahaguna kirtana deva krishna sya mukta sangha param vrajat kali yuga is the best age to become self-realized. And when those sages heard this Kali Yuga, it's like a four-letter word to them. You know, you hear such a traitor, but Kali, what does a name brings, you know, names are very potent. You hear the name of a Rakshasa, Shishupal, Tantavarkya, Agasura, <laughs> but you hear the name of, you know, Valmiki or Narada Muni, or, so these are refined personalities. They're, they're sadhus. Kali Yuga, they heard that name, they fainted. <laughs> Down on the ground, they fainted. So when they came to, they didn't even want to inquire from each other what, what the response was. They didn't want to hear the name again. 
It's an ocean of faults, Kali Yuga. So <clears throat> they kind of brushed themselves up and they said, uh, excuse us, um, Srila Vyasadeva, he went back in the tank of water. Please tell us what is the best age for self-realization. Please, please. <laughs> he came back up. Kaler dosha nihe rajan asti kumaguna kirtanare vikrishnasya mukta sangha param vijay. Many of you may know this shloka if you're shloka wallows. This was spoken by uh, Shukadev Goswami to Maharaj Parikshit on the banks of the Ganges in the Bhagavatam. Kali Yuga, the best. <laughs> they all fell down again. <laughs> anyway, they did it again, and they got the same answer. They tried to maintain themselves. And Srila Vyasadeva said, uh, this age of, of Kali is an ocean of faults. Imagine, we have ocean of salt water. Other parts of the universe, there's oceans of ghee and milk and sugar water and whatever saffron water. He said, Kali Yuga is an ocean of faults, but there's one good thing left in this age, only one good thing, that by the chanting of the Lord's holy names, the Hare Krishna mantra, one can achieve perfection. So he established that. So that is the process for the uh, Kali Yuga. It's very clear. And it was uh, introduced by um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's the incarnation for this age. There's many incarnations. Krishna comes personally, as he did 5,000 years ago, but it's not limited to that, limited to that. As we mentioned the other day, another devotee also mentioned, the Lord is more eager that we come back to the spiritual world than we are. So he comes once in a day of Brahma. Now that may seem like a long time to us, but real time, they always talk about real time, real time is the time of the demigods because they're much more elevated. Their culture, their civilization is mostly Krishna conscious. <laughs> they live that Vedic way of life. So time is calculated by the time of the devatas. We don't calculate time by the time of ants, but we do it by human time, but above the human are the Gandharvas and others and heavenly planets. So the Lord comes in, in that calculation every day. That says something. If someone comes every day and knocks on your door, knock, knock, knock. You know, I have a message for you. Every day, knock, knock, knock. Hey, he's coming every day, he's saying the same thing. If Krishna comes once in a day of Brahma, that's a display of his compassion, that he actually is more concerned about our going back to Godhead than, than we are. But not only that, he comes as various incarnations. He comes as various incarnations. And those incarnations come specifically for the same purpose, to deliver us from material existence. And how many incarnations there are? We know the Das avatars, but Prabhupada said one time, there's more incarnate, Krishna comes in more incarnations than there are as waves on the ocean. Now, if you're a beachgoer, if you like to surf, or you like to walk on the beach and chant your rounds, if you sit down, you, you watch the laps of the waves. It's incessant. It doesn't stop. And that's only one beach. What to speak of all the beaches in the world and all the waves on the ocean. There's more incarnations than the waves of the ocean. And they incarnate also in various species of life, not only human form. We have the, the swan we have the fish incarnation, we have the turtle incarnation, we have the horse incarnation, Hare Griva, <laughs> to give us a basic idea. And what, what is their purpose here? That's stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, 1, 2, 20, 1, 2, 38. Very famous verse. Ete chamsa kalopumsha krishnashtu bhagavan shwayam indvari vyakalam lokam Bidayunte juge juge. Many uh, ISKCON uh, speakers, uh, we say shloka wallas. That's one of the first verses they learn, and it's one of the principal verses they use. 
All of the above mentioned incarnations are either plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions. But Lord Sri Krishna, he's avatari, he's the original personality of Godhead. All of them appear on planets whenever there is a disturbance created by the atheists. The Lord incarnates to protect the theists. This is a very important verse. It's an essential verse. In fact, Srila Jiva Goswami, uh, he, he states in um, his Tatsandharvas, he says this verse is the Paribhasya Sutra of the Bhagavatam. This verse, Ite Shamsa Kolopumsha, this is the Paribhasya uh, Sutra of the Bhagavatam. Paribhasya Sutra means the seed verse of a Shastra. Now there's 18,000 shlokas in Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the seed verse from which, according to Jiva Goswami, all of the verses evolve because it establishes the absolute truth as Krishna. And the whole Bhagavatam elaborates the name, fame, form, pastimes of Krishna. And Amala Bhakti, or awakening our love for Krishna and discovering our intimate relationship with Krishna in one of the four rasas uh, in, in Vrindavan. That's Bhagavatam. Actually, technically, Lord Chaitanya is not an incarnation. Because uh, an incarnation manifests uh, a, a certain percentage of the Lord's opulences, but not all of them. Uh, you know, they'll one incarnation will manifest beauty, another one renunciation, another one knowledge, like this. They're, they come for a particular purpose, and they'll met, they're Krishna, but they're manifesting a certain aspect of Krishna's personality according to time, place, and circumstance. Whereas Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he comes, he manifests all the six opulences of Godhead. Uh, strength, fame, wealth, knowledge, beauty and renunciation, if you study his pastimes. So he's not just an incarnation. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radhe Krishna Nahi Anga. Kaviraj Goswami says that once the Lord was one, but for the purpose of Leela, for pastimes, for pleasure, he expanded as two. Ladini Shakti, his pleasure potency, expanded as Vrindavaneshwari, Srimati Radharani because no one can enjoy alone. If you want to enjoy, you know, you want to get some relief by going to your room for a while <laughs> on, a big, on a camping trip, but really we, we need others to enjoy with. We're social animals. It's because Krishna has that tendency in himself. So to enjoy, he expanded as Radha, Radha expanded as the Sasakis and various Majorias, etc. So that's the family of God. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Unlike other, quote, incarnations, he, when he manifested, he, when he came, he manifested all these various opulence. But his um, unique speciality as a, quote, unquote, incarnation, above and beyond all these other unlimited avatars like waves on the ocean, what's his unique feature, what makes him different from the others? That he widely distributes his Braja Prema freely to the fallen souls of Kali Yuga. He distributes love. And that was uh, recognized by Sri Rupa Goswami. Sri Rupa Goswami and Shanatan Goswami, they were, at one point in their lives, they were working in the government of the uh, Nawab Hussein Shah, who was like the king of that part of Bengal. And his kingdom was in Ram Kali. So they were forced into this work, Rupa and Sanatan. And, uh, but nevertheless, they were great devotees of the Lord. Can the children be a little bit, not move so much? Or be quiet, this boy here? Rupa and Sanatan, the mothers? Maybe the children can sit in back, actually, because it's quite disturbing, this boy in here. Yeah. Is mom here? <laughs> Dad. Dad's here? Yeah. Maybe sit in the back. They were working, but they were uh, 
pure devotees of the Lord because in Goloka Vrindavan they're Manjaris. So many of the gopis in Krishna's pastimes incarnated in Chaitanya's Mahaprabhu's pastimes as male figures. It was all Leela. So they are there working, you know, with the uh, governor and they're all the time meditating on Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They'd heard about him, but they never met him. So Mahaprabhu was making one of his several attempts to go to Vrindavan from Bengal. He never made it. He actually made it when he went to Jagannath Puri. That's later on. So he decided that on his way to Vrindavan, he made a detour. He didn't just go east to west. He went east north <laughs> to meet Rupa and Sanathan. And when he came into that village, it's described, he came into that village, people heard he was coming. And Rupa and Sanatan, they were just, this was, you know, their, their life and soul. Prandanahe means the deity of the Lord, is the, the, the Lord of your life. Prandanahe, he's coming. And they hadn't met him yet. You can imagine the heartbeat of Rupa and Sanatan Goswamis. So Mahaprabhu came, it's a village, you know, a town, but they were living a little on the outskirts. And Mahaprabhu came into that part, he came through the woods, and he came on the, 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 the trail, past where Rupa and Santa Goswamis were staying. And the moment that Rupa Goswami saw this effulgent golden avatar, from his heart came the, the beautiful verse, the momaha badanaya, Krishna Prem Padayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya, Namne Go Namaha. Oh, most munificent incarnation, you are Krishna himself, appearing as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You have assumed the duty. Duty means like the uh, effulgence. Um, you have assumed the the golden color of Srimati Radharani, and you are widely distributing pure love of Krishna. We offer our most respectful obeisances unto you. Now there's many things that can, we can analyze that verse in so many ways. You can give a whole se seminar, one month seminar. But today we're speaking about the special contribution of Shaitanya Mahaprabhu in the age of Kali. So above and beyond all other incarnations, what is he doing, Mahaprabhu? He's distributing pure love of God. This is his mission. And why is it so special? Well, there's, there's no mention in Shastra that of other incarnations focusing on distributing love of God. Of course, any incarnation encourages us to develop our love. But this is the focus of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, during their missions in the world, these other incarnations, there's no mention of them, uh, as we would say in our good Vaishnava tradition, breaking open the storehouse of ecstatic love of God. This is Mahaprabhu. He can do because he's the combination of Radha and Krishna and their pastimes in the spiritual world. They're that Madhurya Bhav, that deep uh, love, spiritual love for each other and others for them. So what does Mahaprabhu do? Mahaprabhu do when he comes here? He breaks open the storehouse of ecstatic love of God. You think of a storehouse, we call that a go-down in India. We talk about the go-down. Go to the go-down and get the supplies. You know, we, we, we store things in go-downs. I have a go-down. That's just how we say it in India in Vrindavan. Go to the go-down. So there's a su supply of, you know, pots, I have a supply of spices, I was in. Mahaprabhu has a, a, a storehouse of prema. Now when other incarnations come, their mission is clearly described in Bhagavad Gita. What do they do? And, and what they do is a very important and essential mission. Paritranaya sadhana vinashaya duskritam Dharma samsta panartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Again and again, Krishna makes it very clear what he does. Uh, in order to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, 
as well as to reestablish the principles of religion, I advent myself millennium after millennium. Essentially to rescue devotees, kill asuras, and reestablish dharma. That's what incarnations do. Of course, Krishna comes and in, he, in his presence here, he defines what is pure love in, in his Bhagavad Gita. And he's, he's not an incarnation. But where is it mentioned that any other incarnation, even Krishna himself, because Prabhupada many times said Krishna is more merciful, or rather Mahaprabhu is more merciful than Krishna. So where is it mentioned that any other incarnation widely distributes ecstatic love? For example, uh, Bhagavan Narasingadev, he appeared to deliver his devotee, Prahlad Maharaj, Paritranaya Sadhanam. Lord Varaha appeared to kill the demon Hiranyaksha, Vinashaya Chaduskritam. And Lord Kapila, he appeared to uh, establish the absolute truth, Dharma Samsta Panartaya. So, with all due respect, there's no mention, uh, because we're biased. <laughs> we were delivered by Mahaprabhu and his representatives. So no, we're a little biased, it's okay. <laughs> There's no other mention in these leelas of this wide uh, distribution of love of God, and what's more, to fallen people. Because generally in Vedic age, it was the Brahmins who picked up the message. Because they had that, uh, those shamskaras, they had that adhikari by dint of their pure life in the mode of goodness. The mode of goodness is the stepping stone to transcendence. So we, Prabhupada came to the West to create an order of Brahmins so that they could deliver themselves and they can deliver others. But basically in Vedic age, it was the Brahmins who picked up the message and they tried their best to share it. So, um, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he's delivering his message, it's even for the Jagaya and Madai. This is the most amazing thing. And this is the particular nature of Nitai. We have many devotees who are Nitai Bhaktas, you know. Jaya Nitai, especially in Bengal. Many God brothers, I say, I go and I say, Jai Radhe, Jai Nitai. <laughs> because Mahaprabhu, this was his Leela, this was his preference. He generally uh, preached to the aristocratic intelligentsia in society, obviously for the reason that much of what society is filters down from the leaders, from the intelligentsia. Their uh, vision of the world, their vision of life, um, they set the standard, good or bad, it filters down to common society. So if you can change the head, then the rest of the body can follow. So Mahaprabhu, Sarvabhombhattacharya, Prakashananda Saraswati, uh, Ramananda Roy, of course, he was the governor of Vidyanagar. He's, a, he's the Lord's eternal associate, but he associated with him and like, like that, he would preach to the intelligentsia. But who would deliver uh, the general mass of people? That's Nitai and Haridash Thakur. They were a Sankatan team. They would go door to door on the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to deliver the fallen people. And they had very interesting techniques. Mahaprabhu would lose shlokas. He would give his mercy in the form of manifesting his Brahman effulgence to Prakashananda Saraswati and his uh, Mayavadis. This was their technique. This was a high level Shastra speaking, debating. Nitai, he would come to a house and he would, with Haridas Thakur, he would encourage the householders, attached, you know, householders, whatever. He would say, please chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare And in Russian, they would say, Nyet. Of course, I'm just, they're not speaking Russian, but Nyet. It's a very, in Russian, I have a hard just, Nyet. Not like, no, nyet. <laughs> well, they wouldn't do. So, so Nita, he would fall on the ground and he'd roll into their house and he'd roll around and break their furniture. <laughs> I'm not going to stop until you chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. <laughs> the problem was that 
sometimes Nitai would go into his mood as Bob as Balaram because there's no difference between Balaram and Lord Nityananda. So sometimes we hear in Chaitanya Bhagavad how you know, the family would come to the door, there'd be some young girls, and he'd see them like gopis. He'd start speaking to them like gopis. And Haridas Thakur would become very embarrassed. <laughs> Stop this, Bob. This is not Dupora. This is Kali Yuga. We're going to get. <laughs> and then Haridas would go back and he'd complain to, um, to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it's Nitai that. that on the order of the Supreme Commander would go out and preach to the, uh, the, the Jagai Madhais. There's that saying Prabhupada said one time, that you can only understand Radha and Krishna by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's why our previous acharyas would go from Mayapur to Vrindavan, Vrindavan to Mayapur, Mayapur. They'd go back and forth like this. There's two. But they'd start in Mayapur. No one can understand Radha and Krishna, it's a very deep subject matter, actually. Without the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But no one can get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without the mercy of Nityananda. And Prabhupada kind of smiled and he said, to get the mercy of Lord Nityananda, you have to go out and preach to the Jagai and Madhais like him. This is how we get mercy. Uh, Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati in his... Um, What is this book? Chaitanya Chandamrita. He says that the way to get the mercy, the way to get the mercy of Shrimati Radhika is to assist in the Sangata movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is the special uh, gift that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He came to flood the world with love of God. Now Kaviraj Goswami he writes in Chaitanya Charitamrita that. Uh, when Krishna appeared 5,000 years ago, he, as a means to awaken our Krishna consciousness and be, get us interested in um, going to Goloka Vrindavan, not just Vaikuntha, when Krishna came, he had so many leelas, meaning he's displaying the same pastimes that he has in Golok. There's Golok and there's Gokul. They sound similar, Golok and Gokul. Golok is the spiritual world. It's the plant, hot, topmost planet in the spiritual world. But when it comes down to the material plane, it's called Gokula. So in Gokula, on this earthly planet, uh, Krishna displays the same pastimes that he has in Goloka Vrindavan as a means to um, catch our eye our interest. But um, it, it, the conditioned souls don't participate. It's like going to a theater. When you go to a theater, you can watch it, but you have to sit in the audience and you can't participate. But by watching, you get the impetus uh, you know, to be like the hero or the heroine in that play. So in, Ma, in Radha, Radha and Krishna's pastimes, when they come, to entice us, they, they show their leelas. And nothing's more attractive than those leelas. The world appears attractive to our conditioned eyes. But if we see or hear about the pastimes of the Lord, just seeing them or hearing them, we have a change of heart. I want to be part of that spiritual production, not mundane movies and romance novels. No. So. It was a display of his leelas. The conditioned souls didn't come in. We just watched or heard about it. But Kaviraj Goswami describes that when Krishna went back to the spiritual world, he considered as follows. Kaviraj Goswami gives us access to the Lord's mind, to the Lord's heart. This is something very extraordinary. We even have that saying, don't try to understand the mind of a, of a great Vaishnava. He'll reveal his mind to us, of course, that's the compassion, but you can't speculate the mind. What to speak of the Lord's mind? Who are we, little tiny ants, trying to understand you know, the mind of a great scientist or whatever? The greatest scientist is Krishna. So how do we have access to the Lord's mind? Through devotees like Kaviraj Goswami, through Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, 
Jiva Goswami, and especially Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. He gives so much nectar. So when Krishna got back to the spiritual world after performing his leelas here 5,000 years ago, he sat down one day and he thought, Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Leela uh, 314, for a long time I have not bestowed unalloyed devotional service to me upon inhabitants of the world. Without such loving attachments, the ad existence of the material world is useless. There's no purpose taking birth as a human being unless you have the desire to awaken your Krishna consciousness. You're just like uh, a four-legged animal on two legs. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Human life, atato brahma jignasi, it's meant for arising, ar arousing our Krishna consciousness. So Krishna's thinking, for a long time, I haven't bestowed unalloyed loving service to the inhabitants of this world. So then in, in verse 19, Kaviraj Goswami reveals what the, the Lord desires to do. It's a, such an important verse for all of us. We can understand why we're sitting here right now. The Lord thought, I shall personally inaugurate the religion of the age. Namasankirtan, the congregational chanting of the holy names. I shall make the world dance in ecstasy, realizing the four mellows, Braj, not Vaikuntha, the four mellows of Amala Bhakti, pure devotional service. In other words, you know, I'll just paraphrase, I'll do a dramatic performance uh, uh, of, the, of the Leela, of chanting the holy names, but this time, I'll invite the fallen condition of souls on the stage. This is the Leela. What did the Lord do when he came here? He personally went on Nagar Sankirtan. He personally preached. If it's good enough for the Lord, if that's where he derives his pleasure, it's good enough for us. We should never hesitate to go on Sankirtan, either by Nagar Sankirtan or by book distribution or by festivals or by internet. That's where the bliss lies. And that's where the source of all our good fortune lies. Every Sankirtan devotee knows that. I was talking with a couple yesterday saying that all of what I learned as quote unquote a leader in Krishna consciousness, I learned it on Sankirtan. How to deal with people, how to organize, how to manage, uh, even money and plans. And I learned everything. What to speak of this r realizations that one is gifted by the Lord as a result of making that sacrifice. Going on Sankatan is the best teacher because Mahaprabhu is pleased and through his representative, Sridhar Prabhupada, he sends his blessings. So that, this is different than Krishna's pastimes. In Krishna's pastimes, we're watching, but in Mahaprabhu's pastimes, come on the stage. It reminds me like on the Polish tour, Vatahari will tell you. On the Polish tour, at, towards the end of the program, we have a kirtan on the stage. And the people dance in front of the stage. The people come because they've been enticed by the, by the five-hour performance. And if it rains, then we say, come on the stage. And they run on the stage. We don't have to like pull them up. They run to be on the stage. And then there's congregational chanting of the holy names. The people, the devotees, and I'm sure the demigods. I've many times felt that the demigods are watching because they're all, they like yagyas. Demigods, they sometimes go to interplanetary cis, you know, parts of the creation just to participate in a yagya somewhere. So what's the yagya for this age? Harinam, harinam, harinam eva kevalam. So they come sometimes. There's a number of instances. In one class we gave in our Vrindavan uh, series, we, we spoke about um, how the demigods, like Narada Muni, on many occasions Prabhupada would point them out in the temple or wherever. Did you see Narada Muni? Did you see Lord Brahma? What? 
Yes, they were dancing. And one devotee said, well, what were they doing? And Prabhupada said, Narada Muni was kind of laughing at you because you're calling you the devotees, but he appreciated. <laughs> he appreciated. So, um, in, in this way, um, Mahaprabhu is flooding not only the world, but the universe, because he said one time the demigods are lining up on the heavenly planets to take birth on the earth, because this is yoga pit. What does yoga pit mean? Like yoga pit, we give a lecture about uh, Govindaji, the beloved deity of Sri Rupa Goswami. So his yoga pit, the place that he appeared, is worshipable in Braj. And that yoga pit, as we know, you remember the story how the little boy came and told Rupa, don't lament, your Lord's here. Look on top of that little hill, hillock. There's a cow that comes every day pouring milk into a hole in the ground. You'll find your Lord there. So Rupa Goswami went to that hill, and lo and behold, he found the top knot of Govindaji. He has a big top knot. And the villagers pulled him out. And that's a yoga pit. Like in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has this yoga pit not far from our temple in Mayapur. It was debated where that where his appearance was, but Bhaktivinoda Thakur, with the help of uh, Jagannath Das Babaji, determined that was where Mahaprabhu appeared. There's a neem tree there under which he was born. So that's called Yoga Pit. And the Yoga Pit where Govindaji appeared in Vrindavan, that's where the Govindaji temple is. If you've been to Braj and you've gone on Parikrama to visit the seven main temples, the Govindaji temple is one of the ma main temples but it's on a rise. You have to walk up the hill to see the temple. It's been partially destroyed, but it's magnificent and transcendental. To walk up a hill. And that's the hillock in which Rupa Goswami found Govindaji. Yogi Pit. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the Yogi Pit, and that's very significant. But his leelas and spreading sankirtan are even more significant because he left that place for us and sent his representative to catch us. Usually in Vedic age, one searches out, searches out a spiritual master. But in this age, the spiritual master goes and finds the disciples. It's the nature of this age. Uh, one time, I remember during the Mayapur festival when Prabhupada was present with us and he was um, at the festival in Mayapur. Uh, he, he mentioned that some of his god brothers were complaining that he never left our compound, which was not so developed at that time, but we, he, he didn't leave our compound, but probably was very, very proud that we had our own property and we were going to develop and build this temple of Vedic planetarium eventually. He could have that in his vision. But god brothers were complaining he never left there to come to the yoga pits to take darshan of where Mahaprabhu appeared. So they were, you know, commenting quite nastily. And Prabhupada said, yes, but what is more important, the place of Mahaprabhu's uh, appearance or the place of his pastimes to deliver the fallen conditioned souls here in Mayapur, at, at our Mayapur Chantadaya Mandir, and all over the world? So this Mahaprabhu did. He, he appeared with, this, with two intentions, actually. It's another lecture, but one was Krishna wanted to understand the bhav or the love that Srimati Radharani had for him, which controls him, because Radha doesn't do what Krishna says. Krishna does what Radha says, because Vrindavan Eshwari Srimati Radharani, she has mahabhav. She has the highest love for Krishna, and she controls Krishna. It's a nice control. <laughs> he likes to be controlled by, by Vrindavaneshwari. He, he, he appeared. And because he was the object of that love, he couldn't figure out her mood of loving him. But it was so amazing. As the supreme controller, he's controlled by Radha's love. If you look in the dictionary, for instance, we have here in America Webster's Dictionary, you'll, you'll see that uh, the defi definition of God, G-O-D, is the supreme controller. But in our Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, we have an understanding that, yes, God is the, is the supreme controller, 
but he's controlled by the love of his devotees. And supreme in that control of love is Vrindavan Eshwari Shimati Radharani. So Krishna is configured out. <laughs> the one thing he couldn't figure out, of course it's a leela. So he appeared as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the mood of a devotee, trying to understand uh, love for um, Krishna. And that he experienced particularly in Jagannath Puri, especially during the Ratha Yatra festival. When in the mood, uh, he's dancing as a devotee, but in the mood of Radha, trying to understand, uh, loving Krishna, Mahaprabhu's loving uh, Jagannath, and he's getting this taste of Radha Bhav. This is those uh, pastimes. Gorgashod, um, uh, Gorgovinda Maharaj, he said that Jagannath Puri is Vipralamba Dham. It's the Dham of feeling separation from Krishna. That, that's the highest ecstasy that Srimati Radharani experiences. Anyway, that's another lecture. He appeared for that purpose, kind of like a private purpose, but he also appeared as the Yuga Dharma to give everyone the opportunity to, to leave this nasty world, Dukalayama Shashvatam, full of uh, temporary world, full of so many miseries, and go back to Godhead and love Krishna in, in the highest way. So um, he, the, the Lord enabled the, the people of Kali Yuga to taste Krishna Prema. Of course, not on the level of Srimati Radharani, because that Mahababa is only understood by, well, by Radharani and by uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and by Madhavinda Puri. How does Madhavinda Puri understand this very deep uh, love of, of Mahabhav? Because it's described uh, by Jiva Goswami that in the spiritual world, Madhavinda Puri is a Kalpa Viksha tree. We sometimes think, you know, Madhurya Bhav, it's so exalted, only gopis. No, he's a, he's a um, Kalpa Viksha tree uh, in one of the, in, in Sevakunj, where Radha and Krishna have their loving pastimes. So because he's a tree, <laughs> not an ordinary tree, but a Kalpa Viksha tree, which supplies many of the essential ingredients for the pastimes of um, the coward boys and, and, and the coward girls and everybody to serve Krishna, he sees all these amazing pastimes. So it, it's described, Radha, and um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Madhavindu Puri, they're the ones who understand Mahabhav. But we can also reach a stage of unalloyed pure devotion as um, jivas. And um, that's uh, possible by that exalted goal of becoming a Vrajabhasi. It's like, what? All the way through Vaikuntha, all those amazing incarnations of the Lord. We can go to Goloka. Vrindavan, even as residents on this earth in Kali Yuga, how is that possible? With Shanatan Goswami, he says, Yata kaschantanam yati kamsham rasa vidanataha tata diksha vidanena dvijatam jayate ninam. One of my favorite verses. As one can transform, transform uh, hell metal into gold by treating it with mercury. One can also turn a low-born man into a brahmana by initiating him properly into Vaishnava activities. There's a process that you can take bell metal and turn it into 24 karat gold with mercury, but not in a laboratory. I once inquired from some sadhus about this verse, some Vaishnava sadhus. How do, how, do you take, <laughs> how do you take mercury and turn it into gold? So they said, what do you want to use that for? <laughs> to enjoy? I said, no, I'm just curious. It's a verse. I'm a sannyasi. Am I going to you know, make gold for sense God? They said, okay, we'll tell you. The yogi, the mystic yogi, he drinks mercury. And by a mystical process in his body, then in the, he doesn't die, but in the morning when he passes urine onto bell metal, poof, it turns to gold. They said, but don't try it. <laughs> so it's, it's like, it's confounding, like what? 
But even more confounding is that, you know, a person in Kali Yuga, addicted to sinful activity and proud of it, they can be convinced to give up all these vices and become a Vaishnava or a Vaishnavi to the degree that Prabhupada said, before my disciples came to Krishna consciousness, they were dirty, unregulated, undisciplined, sinful, uh, addicted to sinful activity, morose. He said, but now that they've taken to Krishna consciousness with their Vaishnav dress and their Kantimala and their Tilak and their effulgent faces, he said, they look just like they've come from Vaikuntha. So as it's a miracle that you can turn bell metal into gold, it's considered a miracle that a conditioned soul can become a Vaishnav or Vaishnavi. And who's the miracle maker? Shudra Prabhupada. He's the miracle maker. People like to hear about miracles, how, you know, 2,000 years ago, Jesus walked on water, he rose, he, he brought the dead back to life. Wow. But no less, if perhaps more of a miracle, is that beyond him doing that, conditioned souls have given up sin. They've taken vows. Guru Maharaj, I vow never again. No meat eating, no illicit sex, no gambling, no intoxication. When, when, um, when the Devatas heard that Devarat, the son of a great king, uh, in order that his father could uh, marry, uh, get a second wife, and the second wife said that I only become a queen if you know my son becomes the next king. <laughs> so the first son of the king was Devarat. So that meant that um, his father couldn't become king because you know he already had a son. So Devarat said, Pita, if you want to marry again, you go ahead. I take a vow of celibacy. I'll never marry. And when Devarat said, I'll never marry, I'll never have sex, the Devatas were in shock. Like, what? How are you going to enjoy? <laughs> That's, you know, Demigods have that propensity, you know. Like people hear our principles. No more meat, no more sex, no more talks. How do you guys do it? So the Devatas were in shock. They went into shock. What? A vow of celibacy? And they, they poured flowers from heaven and said, Bhishma, Bhishma, one who has taken a terrible vow. <laughs> That's how they see it. We don't see it. We see it as freedom. The regulative principles of freedom, Krishna says, the disciplines that we follow, they're the, they're the regulative principles of freedom. We develop freedom by being detached from the material world and attached to Krishna. This is how you get real freedom. The Devatas were in shock. It's all possible by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But if we had to live the standard of, of what Mahaprabhu actually introduced in that time, of course the essence is chanting, dancing, and feasting, but what were the social norms at that time when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduced it? His female disciples could only approach him and offer obeisances 100 meters away. And those who were strict followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were very austere life like him. They'd sleep on the ground, they wouldn't be kings or queens or royalty, and there were so many injunctions, strict in, in, injunctions. So if we had to live like that, it'd be a little difficult. But Sridhar Prabhupada, by the will of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is even more merciful than Gauranga Mahaprabhu. And I say that in front of the camera. Mahaprabhu is more merciful than Krishna. Krishna makes conditions. Sarva dharma puri chaja, mami kam sarva dharma. You give up sinful activity, then I'll protect you from the karma, from the reaction. Mahaprabhu doesn't, Gorni Thai, they don't accept our offenses. They only accept our service. They're so kind. He's an ocean of mercy, not an ocean of false. He's an ocean of mercy, Mahaprabhu, and Nitai, Panchatatva. But Sridhar Prabhupada, you know, we have to be innovative in the spreading of Krishna consciousness. This is something Iskand has to learn. We have to, like Prabhupada was innovative. 
distributing books, giving ladies Gayatri Mantra, sending our girls, our spiritual warriors, the girls on the streets to preach. Brahmins didn't even go on the street. They preached in the temples. What to speak of ladies going on the street and preaching? Prabhupada introduced this. Men and women living in the same temple, that was not there in Gaudiamat. Prabhupada innovated according to time, place, and circumstance. It takes an acharya to be able to do that. But as Kali Yuka advances, the, uh, the world changes. There was a, a television program when I was a boy, As the World Turns. <laughs> as it was about life, you know, material life. So the leaders of our movement have to be able to uh, see how to adapt and um, uh, innovate without um, uh, deteriorating our core principles. Like Vaisheshika Prabhu, he very quickly, being the intelligent person he is, you know how many shlokas and has beautiful lectures, he innovated on the internet. Internet for most people means, you know, gross sense gratification in many ways. But he dovetailed the internet in such a way that he distributed thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of Bhagavad Gita in the first marathon and then sets of books, thousands and thousands. So I like this, we have to innovate if necessary. And Prabhupada did that and it worked. So Prabhupada's not here, so it's the responsibility of the GBC ultimately to determine as time goes on, you know, in your generation, in your children's generations, how to, be, how to innovate without um, depreciating our core values. If we it, it's an art, it takes experience, but it, it has to be done, and Prabhupada was the perfect example of that. And essentially, he, he did that in various ways, but it was all to propagate this dharma for this age. Three words. Hare Krishna and Rama. Nice things come in small packages. It's just beyond our comprehension and sometimes we become a little bit familiar with it. We don't realize that by chanting Hare Krishna, Chaitodarpa and Marjanam, all the impurities in the heart go away. And our material disciples are uprooted and thrown to another dimension. And the possibility, the golden possibility of awakening Prema to the point where Ogavinda feeling her separation I'm considering a moment to be like 12 years or more. Tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rain. That is a possibility. It's in the Shikshasta comparison. What is Shikshasta compares? It's Shraddha to Prem. It's Krishna consciousness in eight easy lessons. Not even 10 easy lessons. <laughs> I tried to learn Polish in 10 easy lessons, I couldn't do it. Shikshasta is Krishna consciousness from A to Z. And we're meant to achieve that perfection. Yes, we're meant to distribute Krishna consciousness, but Prabhupada will be very pleased if we can become pure devotees like him, like father, like son. He wants us to become pure devotees for our own good. And just see what one pure devotee did. What if, what if we had an army of pure devotees? So we have a lot of work to do. There's a lot of slips twixt the cup and the lip. There's many uh, thorns and sharp pebbles, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, on the road to Braj, on the road to pure devotion. So we have to be very strict in following the regulatory principles and very focused that when we sit down and chant our rounds, we chant our rounds. We don't, you know, we have to go beyond the verse vacha vega, manasakrota vega, jiva vega, trying to control the mind and senses. We should go beyond that. We should have faith in the holy name. But it's so merciful that, and, and so beneficial for chanting that we should just focus our mind on that sound vibration as we chant, not too fast, but enough to hear all the 32 syllables and chant from the heart then we can make good progress. Chant from the heart. What does that mean to chant from the heart? One time a devotee asked Sridhar Prabhupada, Sridhar Prabhupada, what is the meaning of the Maha Mantra? <laughs> the new devotee. And we, Prabhupada always had the standard answer. It means, my Lord, my dear energy of the Lord, Sri Radha, uh, please engage me in your devotional service. 
On this occasion, Prabhupada, he just closed his eyes and he said, what does it mean, the chanting of Hare Krishna? It means, my friend, my friend, my friend. A friend in need is a friend indeed, and we are definitely in need of mercy. We've been delivered from the ocean of material existence, but Vasudeva Sarvamati Samahat Masadurlabha, Krishna says, after many births, one achieves full Krishna consciousness. But as I've mentioned many times, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, 1932, initiation lecture, I see no reason why all my disciples cannot go back to God in one lifetime. So the onus is on us, the process is there. And as, as important is japa, also important is coming together like we've done over this last week and chanting together. You could say it's even more important. How can I say that? Because Jiva Goswami, in his Sandarvas, he gives a nice analogy of various holy places like Dwarka, Mathura, and Vrindavan. He says, Dwarka's perfect. The bhav, the mood, serving Krishna is perfect. Krishna's very happy to be uh, in, in, in Dwarka with his queens. He likes that particular ras. But Jiva says, Mathura's more perfect because you, we're introducing this... Um, uh, there, there's no mood of, of Aishvarya Bhav, but awe and veneration, this more free spirit of loving Krishna in a more intimate way, but that's perfected in Vrindavan. So perfect, more perfect is my third, most perfect is uh, Vrindavan. So perfect is chanting Japa, it's perfection. But when many devotees come together and chant very loudly, you know, it resonates with your heart, it's like <laughs> Like when you go to the city hall, you've got some complaint with the administration, and you stand outside, they're having a meeting on the first floor. You're out there, and, hey, you guys, I don't like how the parking tickets are being, you know, given by the police. You know, just close the windows, shut that guy up. <laughs> but if there's a revolution, if uh, a thousand citizens come and they're screaming, you know, somebody comes out and says, what are your complaints? We'll address them like that. In a similar way, when we chant, you know, we have in the midst advanced devotees, we, like Chaturatma Prabhu and Buddha Gopal and, and uh, Lakshmi Shringa and my god sisters, we have advanced devotees. We have devotees at the middle level, like our friends, and we have devotees we're helping. So in the midst of these kirtans, there's devotees like Lakshmi Shringa who gave his, his contribution to ISKCON was every day he had kirtan in front of the computer. Who is, he, there was no one to encourage him in the audience or, he's alone. A great seva. So senior devotees are there to, to, to help us and encourage us. So when they're chanting the holy names on our midst, we get to hear them. And all together, all together now, <laughs> the Beatles said, <laughs> but all together for the purpose of chanting, then the Lord hears that. Everyone gets the sprinkle of mercy. You're in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. So therefore, this congregational chanting is so important. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.5.32 Krishna Varnan Tusha Krishnam Shangopanga Shaparshadam Yagnai Sankitan Payar Yashantihi Shu Medashaha. In the age of Kali, intelligent persons perform congregational chanting to worship the incarnation of Godhead who constantly sings the names of Krishna. Although his complexion is not blackish, he is Krishna himself. He's accompanied by his associates, servants, weapons, and confidential companions. So japa is perfect. Congregational chanting is more perfect. What's most perfect? Take it to the people. Take it to the people. This japa and his congregational chanting, it's to purify us and fix us up. And once we get fixed up, we have an obligation to Prabhupada. The, the disciple can never repay the debt to the spiritual master. We're all followers of Sridhar Prabhupada. Some are his diksha, some are shiksha, but we're all dependent on his mercy. So his Prabhupada's will was that we continue the Sankirtan movement as it's come down through the ages from the... And, and that, going, that was Prabhupada's heartbeat. 
Whenever he would come to a temple, he would always inquire, you know, <laughs> he'd say, so, how many books have been published? How many have been distributed? How many devotees have you made? And he was most pleased when, you know, the temple president would bring in some effulgent brahmacharis, shaved heads, beautiful girls and saris, you know, young, beautiful girls who could have had, you know, uh, a career as models or, you know, intelligent girls, CEOs of companies, you know. He, he was so pleased when he saw the results of the Sankirtan movement. He was very pleased like that. And he made it very clear. Distribute books, distribute books, distribute books, which can also just mean continue the Sankirtan mission. As soon as this missionary spirit, if, if God forbid, it ever dried up and we just stayed in the temple and rang the bells or just had you know, kirtans for ourselves, if we didn't take the kirtan, then, then Iskand could dry up. Iskand's a missionary movement. It's meant to deliver others. So even though we may not be so advanced, even the bhakta who's just taking 101, you know, <laughs> psychology 101, even the devotees have taken this first course in Krishna Khan, he knows more than the greatest scientist, the famous rock star, the biggest politician, the intelligent. He knows more than all of them put together because he knows a hum brahmasmi, not a hum mameti. I am not the body, I am spirit soul. So everyone has the qualification to preach Krishna consciousness as soon as you come into the movement. And that spirit, that's, that's the spirit, that's Prabhupada's spirit. And that was, of course, very prominent. You know, we all remember when we first joined, you know, we had the privileged opportunity. Every age has some special mercy. You have so many books already, so many senior devotees, so many temples. We had um, this opportunity to go out every day on Harinam for like nine hours a day. I remember Bhattu Gopal, the way he played Murdunga, chant like this. <laughs> um, you know, we, we had that, we were on Sankirtan from nine in the morning till, you know, five in the afternoon. We'd come back, <clears throat> have a little prasadam, then there would be another kirtan, evening artik, and then we'd have hot milk with, with uh, honey and, to, you know, make our brains sharp, and we'd go to sleep. It was just kirtan all time. That was a special benediction. But you also have a special, special benediction. You can always be thoughtful in ways of spreading the Sankirtan movement, either doing it directly or being the sport group. Behind every army, there's, say, you know, a certain amount of soldiers on the battlefield, but there's a whole operation behind. My mom was telling me during World War II, my father was on an um, aircraft carrier in the, in the South Seas, and the kamikaze planes, my dad taught me how, told me how the kamikaze planes would come and crash on his USS Cabot. One came, when kamikaze plane came and slid across the, the deck, and the corner of that wing hit his, here, he had, my father had a big scar here, I was very proud of it. I would introduced my father to my friend, see my dad's scar. <laughs> <coughs> so, every generation has an opportunity to spread Sankirtan in a particular way, and that combined effort, going out and preaching Krishna consciousness, then the holy names, very pleased. Holy name wants to be shared. The holy name's a person. Sri Nam Prabhu. Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha. There's no difference between Krishna and his name. He's fully present. Kali Kali Nam Rup Krishna Avatar. The incarnation for this age is the chanting of the holy names. Of course, Mahaprabhu delivers it, but it's, it's the means. And, and that person, he's very pleased when he's dancing on the tip of your tongue in Japa. He's very pleased when you're coming together as, as a congregation, but he wants to be distributed. He wants to, to go everywhere because Krishna is the seed-giving father of every living entity. And this is a process that everyone, without, you know, everyone can be delivered by the... So when you take the holy name to the street, then you get a lot of kripa. To the street means somehow to the people. That's how we make progress. We preach. You know, the girls I was speaking the other day, they're going to college, and they said, what's our devotional service? So your devotional service is your school, your education, because you will use that in the service of Krishna somehow or other. 
to facilitate the Sankatam movement, you know, giving donations or meeting interested people or different forums like that. Like the Pujari does Artik and Temple President, you know, keeps accounts and the Sankatan devotee. If you're going to school, that's your service to Mahaprabhu in your youth. Youth is meant for acquiring knowledge. So you get the best grades and you take your report card and you go in front of the deed and you say, see Lord, I did this for you. Everyone at any point in life can contribute to the Sankatan mission. Many hands make small works. And by doing that, that congregational chanting to, to the people, we can actually get Padam Drishtan Divartante, a higher taste. In Bhakti Sandarbha, Srila Jiva Goswami comments that the process of congregational chanting of the holy names is so potent that by this process, even a neophyte devotee sometimes experiences deep spiritual emotions. I read it. By this chanting, congregational, and going to the streets, he says, it's so potent that even a neophyte devotee can ex sometimes experience ecstasy. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're hankering for these emotions, but we're covered by lust, anger, and greed. But by the causeless mercy of Lord Chaitanya, the process of kirtan is once in a while we get a glimpse, isn't it? Just like a sailor's on the sea and he's sailing, 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 and then the fog clears and he sees the, 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 he sees the land. Land ho! <laughs> so sometimes the fog of illusion which covers us because of our past activity. Sometimes, like, you know, you're in a kirtan of Badahari. And you're just, because he's relishing, because he's chanting purely from the heart. I'm 100% convinced of that. Of course, he's very humble. He doesn't like to hear this, but humility is the sign of his greatness. But sometimes in a kirtan of um, Badahari, I have it's just, you know, whew, you just, wow. Isn't it? You get that experience. And sometimes I've eaten feasts cooked by Govinda Maharaj. He is one of the best cooks in Iskand, but he's, he's also humble. He doesn't, you know, always cook. But Bhakti Chaitanya Swami said, you know, when Govinda Maharaj leads kirtan, it's like gold. When he speaks Harikata, it's like gold. And when he cooks, it's like gold. Some months ago, you know, I was really hungry. I went over to his house, and it was just potatoes and cabbage in the kitchen. I'm really hungry. He cooked it. Oh, my God. How do you make nectar out of cabbage and potatoes? <laughs> and, and, you know, also when I was, when I, sometimes when I read Yamuna Devi's memoirs, you know, about her times with Prabhupada, I just get this, whoa. You know, through her, I get a deeper appreciation of Srila Prabhupada. There, there's those moments. So it's right what Jiva Goswami said. Sometimes we can get this higher taste, even as neophytes in, in, in in Lord Chaitanya Sankirtan movement. It's amazing. Now one last point. Um, this love that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu delivered to the chanting of Hare Krishna, it's very special because this love comes from, well, the world of love. Golok Prem Dan Harinam Shankirtan. This chanting of Hare Krishna according to Naratam Das Thakur, where does it come from? It comes from Goloka. Like if you want to know somebody, right, when you meet them, what's your first question? Hey, um, what's your name? Where, where do you come from? Where, 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 you know, which country are you from? Isn't it? You kind of assess people out like, where are you from? No, I'm from France. Oh, la la, c'est bien, monsieur, bonjour, comment ça va? Or Spain, you know, a buenos dias, como esta? You get an idea of what a person's like. So. This song, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, we get a very uh, interesting idea. Where does it come from? It comes from Galoka. <laughs> it's not a song of this world. It comes from Galoka. Wow, it must be really special, yeah. Generally, it's understood that the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu they're aspiring for love of Krishna in the mood of the Brajabhasis. And that's why we have the chanting of Hare Krishna. We don't chant Om Narayanaya Namaha, 
South India, you hear it all the Om Narayana, am I correct? Om Narayana Maha. You know, with all due respect, um, most, before the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, most Vaishnavas were worshipping Narayan. The idea of worshipping Krishna in, in Madhurya Ras, for example, that first, even before Mahaprabhu, this whole idea of Goloka and the intimate loving relationships with the cowherd boys and the gopis and the cows and the trees <laughs> with Krishna, um, nobody knew that before Mahaprabhu's time. And, and, um, but just before Mahaprabhu's times, um, it was introduced again by Madhavinda Puri, who we discussed earlier. He appeared before Mahaprabhu, and through his um, example and teaching, we get a little idea of what is Braj, particularly the loving mood of the gopis. On his deathbed, we're speeding up here the video, fast forward. On his deathbed, O oh my Lord, O oh gracious to the lowly, thou art now living in Mathura. When will thou come to me, O oh darling mine? My heart is burning in pains of separation. Oh, what shall I do? Oh, what shall I do? That's paraphrasing that famous verse on his deathbed. And maybe Bhattu Kapoor remembers that we used to sing this on the main streets of Detroit, <coughs> our godbrother Baalasarabhu. He took that very famous verse <coughs> where, Mah where Madhavinda Puri is lamenting on his deathbed that you know, he's feeling this Vipalamba Bhav in the mood of the residence of the gopis of Vrindavan. Krishna, you've left for Mathura. <laughs> what am I going to do? A moment's like 12 years or more. O oh, my Lord, O oh, gracious to the lowly, thou art now living in Mathura. When will thou come to me? O oh, darling mine, my heart is burning in pains of separation. <laughs> darling, oh, oh my darling, when will we be qualified to speak like that, my darling? It's possible that we have to work for it. So on his deathbed, he was, he was lamenting like that, Vipalamba And one of his disciples, uh, Ramachandra Puri, he said, Guru Maharaj, why are you lamenting at the moment of death? You're supposed to be liberated, uh, uh, you know. And don't lament like, like an ordinary soul. Oh, you should be blissful when you're leaving. He didn't understand the deeper mood of Madhavinda Puri, this mood of separation. So Madhavinda Puri said, out, you rascal. <laughs> but there was one disciple present there who understood this mood of, that Madhavinda Puri had introduced, even before Mahaprabhu, of the loving mood of the, of the, the residents of Vrindavan, because mostly they live in separation from Krishna. He left when he was very young to go to Mathura. He spent most of his life in Dwarka. Of course, separation makes the heart grow fonder. There's a reason for this separation. But this was understood by another disciple. His name was Ishwara Puri. And he understood the deeper mood of Madhavinda Puri. And he served him like that, even cleaning his urine and stool and taking care of his body. And because of his understanding and because of his seva to his Guru Maharaj, he later became the spiritual master of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, Mahaprabhu doesn't need a spiritual master, but in that incarnation as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a lot of what he did was example for us as devotees. And, uh, well, then finally Mahaprabhu appeared. And a few people may have known because of Madhavinda Puri, but again, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, he broke open the storehouse of love of God. His mission was to introduce the Yuga Dharma, establish Vrindavan as the most sacred of all places, and uh, Reveal that the, the gopis had the highest love for, uh, for Krishna. And he, uh, I wouldn't say he discouraged us from worshiping Lord Narayan, because he is Lord Narayan, but he told us very clearly that Krishna has certain characteristics that even Lord Narayan doesn't have. For instance, Krishna, he's the performer of wonderful childhood pastimes. He's always uh, surrounded by devotees endowed with love of God. He can attract uh, the whole universe by his flute playing, and his beauty cannot be um, uh, reviled. No one, no one can become as beautiful as him. So we're recipients 
uh, of that mercy. It's, it's, it's come down to us. We've been liberated. Um, when the other avatars come to this world, they, they, they come with their astras, with their weapons. You know, the incarnations, they have their club, their disc, their bows and the arrows. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has weapons of, of a different nature to defeat our false ego and our attachment to this world. And what is that? Krishna Bharan Tusha Krishnam Shangopankashiparshadam Yagnai Sankatan Paya Yajintihi Shumeraha. In the age of Kali, intelligent persons perform congregational chanting to worship the incarnation of God who sings the name of Krishna. His complexion is blackest, he's Krishna himself. He's accompanied by his associates of weapons, astras. He also comes with weapons, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but what are his astras? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And when you get a little tired, you take the shot. This way he defeats the material consciousness embedded in Kolosu Dharamavan, the people of Kali Yuga. Of course, we know that Mahaprabhu did manifest his one of his astras, what was it? The Sudarsan Chakra. <laughs> he just couldn't control himself because Madhai had broken the pot on Nitai's head and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu couldn't stand that. So he kind of left his bob of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Came like he took out his Sudarsan. But Nitai reminded him, wait a minute. If you're going to act like this, you have to cut off the head of everyone in Kali Yuga because everyone in Kali Yuga is a Jagai and Madhai. You're in a different mood in this age, my lord. You destroy the demoniac mentality of people, not their bodies. So Mahaprabhu conquered. We, oh, we hear that in Chaitanya Charjami. It's quite an outstanding statement. When Mahaprabhu was here, the whole world, the whole universe, went back to Godhead. I'm not sure I understand. You don't understand? <laughs> Siri doesn't understand. because She doesn't have human ears. She's a robot. I'll talk to you later, Siri. <laughs> so Mahaprabhu conquered the whole world and he continues to conquer the whole world through the chanting of the holy names. From Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, Samsara Sharpa Darshanam Muchitanam Kalo Yuge, Asadham Bhagavan Nama, Shurimad Vaishnava Sevanam. In the age of Kali, persons who have been bitten by the serpent of Samsara shall get relief by the medicinal herb of chanting the holy names of the Lord and menial service to the Vaishnavas. I can repeat that. In the age of Kali, persons who have been bitten by the serpent of samsara shall get relief by the medicinal herb of chanting the holy names of the Lord and menial service to the lotus feet of Vaishnavas. So therefore, our main business is chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 And serving the three person, these, these three persons, Alatis I'm going to mention, with equal uh, love and devotion. The Vaishnavas, the spiritual master, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> I'd actually like to finish today with a poem, a beautiful poem that I came about, came, came across by a devotee named Premananda Das. Uh, the scholar uh, Sukumar, uh, Sukumar Sen, he, in his book, A History of Braj Bhuli Literature, he writes that uh, Premananda Das, was, he was also known as Premadas, I read. Um, he lived in the early 1700s and he was a disciple of Hari Goswami, a devotee in the line of Lord Nityananda Prabhu's wife, uh, Janava Devi. He took initiation to that line. And he was born in the village of Kulia, near Navadweep. And I was reading that when he was 16 years old, he left home. And he went to Braj, where he became a cook for Gurbindaji, a cook for Gurbindaji, uh, the deity of Rupa Goswami. 
And amongst other writings, this uh, Premadas was the author of Vamsi Shiksha. And Vamsi Shiksha is a poem dealing with the life and teachings of Mahaprabhu's associate, Vamsi Vadana. It's really interesting. And he also wrote um, Chaitanya Chandradaya Kumudi, which is a Bengali metrical version of um, Chaitanya Chandradaya Natakam by Kavi Karnapur. And he's accepted very much by our, our Vaishnava Acharya, he's a very nice devotee. And um, today we'll recite his poem, it's called Without the Son of Sachi. <laughs> I thought this would be. There's a lot of Bengali, I won't read the Bengali, but th th this is such a nice poem. Without the Son of Sachi. This is Bipra Lamba Bob already we're hearing this. <laughs> Without the Son of Sachi. Without the son of Sachi, whose ears would have heard the most wonderfully holy name, which is renowned as Prema? Who would have informed us of the glories of the names of Lord Krishna? Who would be able to enter the greatest sweetness of Vrindavan forest? Who would have informed us of the splendid nectar, fame, and sweetness of Sri Radha? Who would have uh, understood her satika vikara, her transcendental happiness? Who would have understood the pastimes in Braj, the ras and the maharas, the nature of prem and parakiva, ras, paramarla, the glories of the gopis, and the topmost limit of vibhichari bhav? So glorious and fortunate is the age of Kali. Lord Nitai and Lord Chaitanya being absolutely merciful, have revealed the great ecstasy of pure transcendental love and filled the entire universe with it, an attainment which is beyond the reach of even Lord Brahma. Without considering who was exalted and who was degraded, they, Chaitanya Nitai, offered their loving embrace to one and all. Premananda says, Please embrace such munificent Lord Shigaranga within your heart. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Lecture, kirtan, lecture, kirtan, lecture, kirtan. Who, who's next on the um, kirtan program? We haven't decided.